Okay, um, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, my name is uh, Ben Darnell, I'm the uh, CTO and co-founder of Cockroach Labs. I'm here today to talk to you about running CockroachDB on DCOS. Um, so today I'm going to talk about this uh, concept of a cloud native database, what that means and why you, uh, why you should be interested in, uh, in using one, and then also why you should be looking at uh, CockroachDB uh, specifically as your uh, cloud native database, and why this kind of database is a natural fit for advanced orchestration platforms like, uh, like DCOS. Um, and then I'll uh, be giving you a, a demonstration of the new uh, DCOS package that we're, uh, we're announcing today. Um, so what is a cloud native database? Um, well, cloud native, um, we think of it as being a collection of, uh, of features, um, including horizontal scalability, where you can just add, add new machines e easily. Um, individual machines in the cluster aren't really special. You don't have primaries and secondaries. You don't have different kinds of, uh, of, of replicas. And the, uh, the entire system is, uh, is built to handle, handle failures transparently and provide you with uh, continuous availability. Um, so why, why is this important? Well, because it helps your business adapt to change. Your database can grow and shrink based on, uh, based on demands, both of, of storage and, uh, and query traffic. Um, it gives you very easy and rapid development so that your, uh, your developers can make, uh, make progress quickly and get, uh, get changes into production easily. Um, and the cluster can be uh, self-organizing to reduce, uh, to, to, to balance load and reduce latency. Um, this is especially important in global businesses where uh, you typically have traffic patterns where the load follows the sun. Uh, traditional databases have trouble with these, uh, with these characteristics. Uh, traditional databases are more comfortable scale, scaling vertically than horizontally. Um, they make you distinguish between primaries and secondaries and read-only replicas and on and on. Um, and frequently, um, this, well, this varies depending on the database, you have a manual and error-prone uh, failure process, um, often involving asynchronous replication that may, uh, that may lose data when there's a failover. Um, in CockroachDB, on the other hand, um, you can uh, add nodes to the cluster at any time and the data automatically rebalances across them. Um, any node can serve any role. There's no distinguished uh, primaries, secondaries, or anything like that. Um, and uh, failover is automatic, and everything is handled using uh, consistent consensus-based replication. Um, and so, uh, when you're talking, so, so a cloud-native database is a uh, is a good fit for. Uh, for, for an advanced uh, orchestration platform like uh, like DCOS, because it provides a lot of uh, a lot of functionality that uh, that you need to provide uh, this kind of this level of service. Um, so the first of all, um, DCOS, like a lot of uh, a lot of container uh, platforms, uh, provides uh, elastic allocation and scheduling. So it can uh, you, you can say I need uh, I need ten copies of this uh, of this process, and it will uh, it'll find space on your uh, on your uh, hardware to to run that. Um, it provides uh, service discovery, uh, network uh, virtual IP addresses, load balancing, that sort of thing for managing communication between, uh, between both the, within the database and uh, the database and your application. And then uh, one of the most interesting uh, things that uh, DCOS provides now is uh, uh, what we think of as weekly persistent local storage, which solves a, uh, a dilemma that, uh, that you tend to face in uh, co container-based deployments of, of databases. Um, in, uh, in sort of the first wave of container-based deployments, you have, uh, you have a couple of different options for how to manage your, uh, your, your actual data. Um, one way is to just uh, use uh, a RAID array or some sort of network-attached storage that uh, will store your data uh, persistently and, uh, and reliably and redundantly. Um, but this is, uh, this is expensive. Um, it's, uh, you, you can um, you know, spend, uh, spend tons of money on, a, uh, on an enterprise-grade uh, network-attached storage box, uh, but you don't really need that when uh, CockroachDB provides its own redundancy internally. Um, on the opposite extreme, uh, container platforms will often provide you with just uh, ephemeral disk that gets wiped whenever, you're, uh, whenever your job gets rescheduled. Uh, but that's no good for a database either because if you, uh, if, you lose all your, if you lose too many nodes at once, then you may lose all the, uh, all the replicas of your data. And so um, using the new DCOS SDK, we can take more control of the scheduling process and give you, uh, give you more, uh, a stronger degree of association with the data that's on your node's local disks so that you can have uh, a good degree of, uh, of reliability with, uh, with, with data that's not, uh, where you're not paying for multiple levels of redundancy. Um, and so uh, today, um, here at this uh, conference, we're announcing the uh, release of our, uh, of our DCOS uh, package. 
um, which you can install uh, with a single command, DCOS pack package install CockroachDB. Um, and this will start up a three node cluster for you. Um, and this, uh, you can change this, uh, change this later by going, uh, going back into the uh, DCOS interface and changing the, uh, changing the node count variable. Um, you can also do all of this uh, both through, through, the, through the command line or, uh, or through the web-based interface. Um, all right, so uh, before, I, uh, before I go into uh, demonstrating this package, uh, let me tell you a little bit more about, uh, about CockroachDB and, uh, and what it can do for you. Uh, CockroachDB is an open source uh, SQL database for global cloud services. So uh, the key things that it, uh, that it provides are distributed SQL, um, so you can use, uh, use uh, the SQL, uh, SQL language and your existing, uh, existing tools across, uh, across a large uh, pool of resources, and it provides uh, data integrity at, uh, at global scale, which means uh, high availability or multi-active availability, as we call it, and uh, the entire system is built on a system of consistent transactions and consistent replication. So distributed SQL makes it possible for uh, CockroachDB uh, as, your, as a database to grow, uh, grow along with your application. Uh, this is full-fledged uh, full SQL with uh, ACID semantics and indexing, joins, um, the whole deal, um, and it runs across, uh, across multiple database servers. And so this uh, lets you take advantage of both distributed storage across your, uh, across your pool of, of resources and also the distributed uh, computational resources on these nodes. So in CockroachDB, uh, scaling is always transparent. Your tables can grow to any size. There's no, uh, there's no manual partitioning or, uh, or configuration needed as your, uh, as your data grows. Um, you can just add, uh, add more machines at any time and the data rebalances automatically across the, uh, across the pool within, uh, within constraints that you can configure if you, if you need to. Um, we also support distributed execution of your SQL queries. So when you, uh, when you do an aggregate query like uh, select sum of duration from sessions, um, this query is actually going to be farmed out to all of the nodes in the cluster that contain data for the sessions table. And it will, uh, e each of those nodes will compute their partial sum and then send, the, uh, send those inter intermediate results back up to the, back up to the gateway node for, uh, for the final, uh, final sum. And so this gives you, um, it gives you a very, very efficient way to uh, operate on large amounts of data spanning, uh, spanning large numbers of machines. Um, so DCOS uh, gives us uh, flexible scheduling for these, uh, for these different uh, database nodes. And so you can, uh, you can schedule your uh, CockroachDB nodes uh, near your application servers for, uh, for lower latency. Um, you can even schedule them on your uh, application servers if you don't, uh, you, you know, if you end up with unused uh, disk capacity, then you can just uh, start up a cockroach node to kind of make that, uh, make that disk space available to, uh, uh, as a part of your uh, database to the rest of your cluster. Um, and you also have a lot of flexibility in terms of where you place these, uh, these resources. Um, you can, uh, you can span, your, uh, span your cluster across the globe. You can, uh, if you have at least, uh, at least three data centers, then you can uh, survive the outage of any, of any one data center. Um, you can also survive uh, the loss of, uh, loss of machines um, within, uh, within these data centers. Um, and so this gives you the flexibility to put your, uh, put your data close to your customers and, uh, and provide them with, uh, with low latency uh, access. Um, so uh, I talked about, uh, I mentioned multi-active availability uh, already. Um, this is our, uh, our way to, uh, the, the way that we provide to survive, uh, survive disasters. Um, and this is, uh, this is sort of a new term, so I'll explain what I, uh, what I mean by that. Um, you can think of uh, disaster recovery originally as being about, uh, about backup and restore. So you would have a, uh, have a database and a bunch of services talking to it, and then you would make a, make a backup and store that remotely so that in the event of a, uh, of a uh, data center outage, you'd have something that you could, uh, you could use to get back online and recover. Um, of course, this, uh, th this was pretty painful because it was a very uh, manual process and, uh, and took a long time. And so if in the event of an outage, you would, uh, you, you would have a lot, of, a lot of downtime. So um, this, uh, this evolved and uh, we moved towards a, uh, towards a, a, a more efficient uh, failover model where you would have um, uh, uh, a hot spare uh, uh, database. Um, so you'd have a primary and a secondary with asynchronous uh, replication between them, um, which uh, means that you, uh, you really have much less, uh, much less downtime when, you're, uh, when, when there's a failover. But you've got, uh, it's fairly expensive because you've got this huge pool of resources in your secondary data center that's just sitting idle most of the time. Um, 
And so then the next step in this, uh, in this evolution is active-active, uh, is where both, uh, both sides of the, uh, of the link are, uh, are serving traffic at the same time. Um, this uh, doesn't actually get you a huge amount more efficiency because um, even though neither side of the, of the connection is, uh, is sitting completely idle, you don't want to work, uh, work this uh, cluster too hard because it will, um, if you are using uh, both sides at more than 50%, then one, one goes down and you're, uh, you've exceeded the capacity on your remaining data center. And so you still have to keep, uh, keep utilization on these, uh, on these clusters low. Um, there's also a problem that uh, th this replication can either be uh, consistent, uh, can either be synchronous or asynchronous. So consensus, consistent replication is uh, is going to be uh, going to be synchronous. It's going to impact your uh, your, your uh, latency, and it's also going to hurt availability because when the second uh, data center goes down, the first one actually gets uh, gets blocked because it can't commit its uh, its two phase transactions across uh, across both replicas. If you use asynchronous replication, on the other hand, then um, then you've given up on consistency of your of your data, and there's uh, there's an, always an opportunity for conflicts between the uh, between the two data centers. And so the cockroach DB model, which we call multi-active availability, is an extension of active-active to more than uh, to more than two no to more than two uh, data centers. And this sounds like a small thing, but it's really uh, it really kind of is kind of a game changer because it makes it possible to use uh, consensus-based replication instead of being stuck in the, uh, in the asynchronous uh, log forwarding model or the, uh, or the synchronous two-phase commit model. And so in this mode, you have, um, you, you have at least three replicas of everything, and uh, whenever, you go to a, uh, whenever you go to commit a change, that, goes to, that is, gets broadcast to all of the replicas, and two out of three, or three out of five, need to, uh, need to acknowledge the change in order for it to, uh, to be considered committed. And so you don't need to rely on every, uh, on every data center or every replica being up, but uh, you, just need, uh, you just need two out of the three so that you have the, uh, the, the, better, uh, the better of the two uh, latency-wise, and you still have uh, high availability and the ability to uh, tolerate uh, data center failures. Um, and the same, uh, the same uh, pattern plays out on a smaller scale, even if you're in a single data center, um, because everything is replicated three ways and, um, and can survive uh, the loss of, of individual machines in the data center. Um, whenever, uh, whenever a machine uh, goes down, that uh, kicks off an automatic repair process that will go and, uh, and uh, re-replicate that node's data onto, uh, onto the uh, remaining nodes. Um, and so, on top of all this, uh, on top of this uh, highly available uh, 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 replication, um, we also support distributed transactions. Um, these are uh, full-fledged uh, ACID transactions that uh, give you all of the uh, all the guarantees you expect from a relational database. Um, and like I said, it's built on this consensus replication model using the uh, RAFT consensus algorithm. So all changes go to a majority of. Uh, of the replicas, and uh, you can never uh, you can never lose committed data as long as you uh, as long as you don't lose a uh, half of your uh, half of your replicas. Um, we have uh, distributed transactions which can span um, rows, uh, tables, even databases. There's no restrictions on what can go into a uh, into a transaction in CockroachDB. Um, there is a limitation on the size of a write transaction, um, but uh, you can. Th there's no limitation on what uh, what uh, tables or other objects can be. Um, can be included in, in the in the transaction, and if you're familiar with uh, the concept of SQL isolation levels, you know that databases give you a uh, get, give you a number of different uh, configurable settings that you can use for the isolation of your transaction. Uh, Cockroach defaults to serializability, which is the highest of the four standard SQL isolation levels, uh, because we we think it's important that your uh, database provide. Um, provide the maximum amount of consistency, because it turns out that actually trying to think about all the different ways that things can go wrong in lesser isolation levels is really, uh, is really difficult, and um, we, we don't think that's a good, uh, a good trade-off for, uh, for developers to have to make. Um, and so um, now I'm going to give you a, uh, a demo, um, as long as the uh, Wi-Fi is cooperating. Um, so this is a brand new uh, DCOS cluster that I set up this morning um, on AWS using the, uh, the just default installation instructions. Um, and so I can go into the, uh, the package catalog and find uh, CockroachDB and click deploy. And so it's a, uh, a one-click process. This is going to start up uh, five tasks in, uh, in DCOS. 
Uh, the first task, which is starting up right now, is the scheduler. So this is, uh, this is using the, uh, the DCOS SDK um, instead, of, uh, instead of Marathon. And so it takes on some of the uh, scheduling uh, work itself. And so this is, uh, this is the first task that gets, uh, gets started up. Um, there's very little, um, very little custom code in this package. And actually, in CockroachDB 1.1, which is coming up pretty soon, even that uh, custom code is going away. OK, and so now we can see that the other, uh, the other four tasks have started up. Um, and so what's running here is the scheduler, um, a metric server, which translates um, Cockroach's uh, exported metrics from uh, the Prometheus format, which, we, uh, which we've supported as our first uh, monitoring integration, to the StatsD uh, service that, uh, that DCOS provides for us. And then we've started up three, uh, three Cockroach nodes. Um, and we can actually uh, go over to another tab and see uh, this is the, um, the uh, built-in admin UI on one of these nodes. Um, by the way, even though if, if you can see the address bar, this, it says localhost. Um, that's, this is actually running in that DCOS cluster. Um, I just set up a, uh, a SSH port forward as a, as a shortcut there. Um, so a database that's not doing anything is not very interesting. And so I'm going to launch another um, another application just to put some, uh, put some load on it. So this is uh, a simple uh, JSON file specifying a, uh, a Docker container. This is just a, um, a Docker container that we've, uh, we've built for uh, purposes of just generating load on a, on a cockroach cluster. And so it's going to, um, it's going to start, up, uh, start up the cluster with a parameter pointing to the, uh, pointing to the first node in the, uh, in the cluster. Um, and with one, uh, one command that is uh, started. And we should be able to watch um, in just a minute and see the, uh, see the SQL query uh, graph spike up. And there it goes. Um, so this, uh, I want to call your attention to this, uh, the third graph on this page, the replicas per node. Um, so we see here that um, the, uh, so, so all the data in CockroachDB is broken up into ranges. Um, each range is, uh, is a contiguous chunk of, uh, of data in the database, um, usually uh, 64 megs by default. And so we can see here that, um, that the, uh, the number of, of replicas on each, on each node is, uh, is the same. Um, and as the, uh, as the uh, the load generator is running. We're seeing that this uh, this number is uh, is increasing uh, over time as new uh, as new uh, ranges get uh, get split off from the uh, from the data as it grows. We can see um, see some other uh, other variables here. We can see the uh, the rate at which the uh, the, the data is is growing. Uh, but let's go, go back to, uh, to here to see the uh, replicas per node. And I'm going to go to the uh, DCOS web interface um, on my CockroachDB service. And I'm going to go in here and edit it. So here in the uh, environment tab, we have uh, a bunch of variables, including node count. So I'm going to change this from three to five. So click OK. And so now we'll see uh, two more tasks showing up um, on, this, uh, on this list once they get, uh, once they get started up. And we're just uh, just waiting a minute for uh, for those tasks to start up. And here it goes. So here's um, here's the first of the two of the two new nodes. And we should be able to see here in just a minute that um, a new node appears in, uh, in this graph. All 
right? So it didn't, uh, it didn't refresh automatically, but uh, and I had to manually refresh it to get it to show up. And so now you can see that the, uh, the replicas per node um, is going down because the new node is available and it's, uh, and it's uh, rebalancing onto these uh, other nodes. Oh, and the SQL queries is also going down. That's not good. Um, uh, the joys of live demos. Um, All right, I think this is actually a yeah this this is a uh, this is a UI bug. It's it's misrendering the last data point as a as a zero. But anyway, you can see here that uh, over the course of a couple of uh, of data points, that the um, that the number of uh, the, there were twelve replicas per node when there were three nodes, and then once it got up to um, once the additional nodes started up, that uh, that the other uh, other replicas got uh, got rebalanced onto the uh, onto the new nodes, and the number of replicas per node is uh, is going down. Um, so that's uh, that's an example of uh, of how easy it is to run uh, run cockroach on uh, on DCOS. And so now back to the uh, like the presentation. So um, I'm going to tell you about the uh, the current status of uh, of cockroach DB. Um, current version, um, which was just released uh, yesterday, is 1.0.6. Um, our first production ready release was in uh, May of uh, May of this year, so we've been doing uh, uh, six. Uh, this is our sixth uh, patch release since then, and our 1.0 version um, was uh, provided all the all the core benefits of CockroachDB: the uh, distributed SQL, uh, multi-active availability. Um, it also um, comes in both uh, both an open source and an enterprise uh, edition. Um, and in the enterprise edition, um, the first, uh, the first uh, feature we have there is uh, distributed and incremental backup and restore. Um, we do have a backup option for the, uh, for the open source edition um, using kind of a SQL dump format, um, which uh, produces a, a file, of, uh, file full of insert statements that can be used to recreate your data. Um, so you do have a, a backup option in the, uh, in the free edition, but the enterprise uh, edition has a, uh, has a, a, an implementation of backup and restore that is uh, much faster both for, on both the backup and restore sides. Um, and then uh, very soon, probably within a month, we'll have uh, version 1.1. Um, the, uh, the, the key theme of this, uh, of this next release is uh, what we're, we're calling it ruggedization, which is just trying to make, uh, make the database uh, more, ro more robust um, in, uh, in production, giving uh, database uh, operators um, the tools that they need to inspect the, inspect the cluster, see, uh, see what's running, um, what, uh, what queries are taking a long time, how to, uh, how to adjust, uh, adjust uh, queries to improve their performance and uh, cancel long running queries, things like that. Um, and, uh, of course, all, uh, every CockroachDB release uh, includes a, you know, ongoing work on performance and uh, SQL feature coverage and bug fixing, all of the, uh, all the usual things. Um, so most of the most of the new features in uh, 1.1 are related to uh, operational things. They're more administrative tools than uh, so, sort of uh, high-profile features. But we do have one uh, one big one, which is a fast uh, CSV importer, um, which uses uh, uses the same framework as the enterprise um, as the enterprise uh, backup and restore functionality. Um, but uh, we're making this available in the uh, in the free version of the uh, of the product. Um, because we know that it's important uh, for everyone to be able to get uh, get their data into uh, CockroachDB to be able to even start uh, start trying it out. Um, in the uh, in the longer term, um, this is uh, mainly looking at features that are slated for our next uh, release, um, which we uh, slated for next uh, next spring. Um, of course, uh, the ever present uh, performance and uh, SQL feature uh, categories um, are top. Uh, one of the one, our top uh, requested SQL feature um, is going to be coming in this next uh, next release, which is uh, JSON uh, column types, um, inspired by the uh, the Postgres JSONB format. Um, we're also uh, building change data capture so that you can get a uh, a table or database level uh, log of all changes uh, emitted out to uh, to Kafka, um, so that you can stream those uh, that stream that data into other uh, into other uh, data uh, storage systems. Um, for uh, for later analysis, and we're working on uh, on improving our support for uh, global data architecture, and uh, and especially giving uh, get, giving you better tools for uh, for for managing a cluster uh, spread out over a large 
but large area with high latency uh, network links. Um, part of this is going to be in the form of a new uh, enterprise feature for uh, row-level uh, data partitioning, um, which gives an admin control over, uh, over data placement at a, uh, at a sub-table level, um, as opposed to the table granularity controls that you, uh, that you get in the open source edition. Um, so uh, that's, uh, that, that's pretty, much, uh, pretty much it. So here are a bunch of links for where you can uh, find out more about us. Um, our main website is cockroachlabs.com. Uh, all of our uh, source code is on GitHub at cockroachdb slash cockroach. Um, if you want instructions for running uh, Cockroach on DCOS, um, the best document for that is currently in the, on github.com slash DCOS slash examples. Um, there's a link on that page for, uh, for cockroachdb. Um, and we're also uh, active on uh, the Gitter uh, chat system. So if you want to come uh, chat with us in real time, then, uh, then that would be the, uh, be the best place to do it. Um, and uh, with that, I'd be happy to uh, answer any uh, questions you have. Uh, yes. Um, right, so the, the question is about um, how sensitive uh, CockroachDB is to clock, uh, clock synchronization problems. Um, this was something that Kyle Kingsbury uh, uh, referred to in his, uh, in his Jepson report on, uh, on analyzing the consistency of CockroachDB. Um, so uh, this, is a, uh, th this is something that we're, um, of course, uh, paying, paying attention to very closely. Um, we do uh, most of our testing on uh, the public cloud platforms. Um, and uh, we find that uh, in general, NTP works, uh, works very well. So um, if, as long as you run, uh, run NTP on, uh, on, your, uh, on your nodes, um, th then, uh, th then this hasn't really been a, uh, been a problem in practice. We see um, sub, uh, sub 10 millisecond uh, clock offsets, um, and the default, uh, default configuration for CockroachDB is, is to, uh, is to uh, have a, uh, for, for the nodes to, uh, to crash and, uh, and die uh, if they detect a clock, clock, clock offset of 250 milliseconds. Um, and then to actually have a consistency problem, uh, you would need a clock offset of half a second. Um, and we, uh, we run in this configuration on, uh, on you know, all the major uh, virtualized cloud platforms. And we don't, uh, we don't really have any trouble keeping uh, clock offsets uh, well, uh, you know, uh, 50 times below the, uh, the, the maximum limit there. So this is, um, th this is something that you do have to watch out for. You've gotta be sure that you are running uh, NTP. Um, you can't just count on the cloud platform doing it for you. Um, but uh, as long as you're running NTP, this, is, uh, th this has not, been, uh, not proven to be a problem in practice. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, how does this, considering that there are obviously more secure off those synchronous applications, um, how does this compare to um, other databases and performance? So, so how does the performance compare to other uh, other SQL-based uh, databases? Well, it's a, it, it's it's a tricky question to answer because it's tricky to get an apples to apples comparison. Um, and so, um, one way to look at it is to just compare uh, single node performance. So a single node of Cockroach um, compared to a single node of, uh, of Postgres, um, for example, um, we're, we're uh, you know the, the, there's no uh, the, there's no fundamental you know reason why that those are uh, those are different uh, different sorts of environments, um, and so you can sort of get a baseline uh, baseline number there. And uh, for most operations, we're uh, we're within a factor of two of Postgres uh, single node performance. Um, as for the impact of, uh, of synchronous replication, um, this is going to uh, depend on uh, both the layout of your, uh, of your nodes um, for, in terms of geographic distribution and, um, 
and uh, the distribution of your query traffic. If your uh, queries are well distributed across the, uh, across the key space, um, then you can get a lot of parallelization even though the latency is high. And so that, uh, that also helps mitigate it. Um, but if you have a lot of contention in your queries and they're all hitting the same key, then, um, th then your performance is going to uh, suffer in proportion to the latency between, uh, between your nodes. And so um, for the most part, we do, uh, we do recommend uh, that unless you really need uh, sort of a globe-spanning architecture that you probably want to keep um, you know, three availability zones in one region um, or the equivalent uh, you know, terminology across, uh, across other, uh, other uh, hosting providers um, because you are going to be paying that, uh, that latency uh, hit on all of, your, uh, all of your writes to go across to the, uh, to the other replicas. Um, for, the, um, for, for your reads, of course, that reads don't have to go through the consensus layer and so you have to talk to the, uh, to, to the leader of a range but um, that uh, doesn't uh, doesn't necessarily uh, mean going uh, going across the network if the, if the leader is local and we do um, w when query patterns allow us to optimize things by uh, assigning a leader in the place where the query is coming from um, we take advantage of that so that um, so that you can have as uh, as good a performance as possible yes. Uh, yeah, so the question is, uh, do we get, uh, when you run uh, sort of complicated SQL queries with uh, joins and where clauses and things like that, do you get uh, good performance in the distributed environment? And um, that's a complicated question to, uh, to, to answer, um, but uh, we, we do generally get, uh, get good results in, um, in terms of being able to uh, split, up a, uh, split up a query uh, in such a way that it can um, that it can run as, as efficiently as possible across, uh, across these clusters. So our, the, the biggest uh, limitation uh, for that, uh, that sort of thing right now is that the query planner is, uh, is kind of stupid and it doesn't know, uh, it doesn't know a lot about, uh, about query, uh, the, the table statistics, how to take advantage of the fact, that, uh, like it, it doesn't know how to take advantage of the fact that maybe one table is a lot smaller than the other. And so sometimes it will uh, it, it'll produce a very inefficient query plan for joins, um, and you have to kind of give it uh, hold its hand and tell it uh, exactly uh, how to uh, how to join things together. Um, but um, yeah, we, we have a uh, yeah we, we have a pretty good uh, pretty good ability to uh, to take uh, take queries that are um, sort sort of well indexed and uh, and turn those into efficient uh, distributed query plans. Yes. Uh, no, we don't. Uh, we don't currently support uh, the geometry or, ge or spatial uh, indexing formats that uh, that Postgres does. Uh, no, no user-defined types either. Um, the best way to think of our uh, of our SQL support at this point is that um, we implement a very large fraction of the common subset of SQL across uh, across all major databases. Um, we don't support a lot of things that are uh, that are unique to any particular database. Yes. Uh, yeah, so we have made a lot of improvements in our join support over the last uh, six to nine months. So um, we, uh, we we did a, uh, a blog post um, about a year ago, I think, which is probably what you're uh, what you're thinking of, where we talked about our um, you know our, our initial version of joins being um, kind of uh, kind of limited. Um, I think that we've made uh, made improvements in uh, in a number of uh, areas. Um, for one thing, we implement uh, merge joins now and not just hash joins. Um, we, the query planner has gotten uh, has gotten smarter. Um, we support uh, temporary uh, on disk spooling of uh, of intermediate results, um, so it doesn't have to uh, all uh, all fit in uh, in memory. And so um, 
yeah, we've uh, we've made uh, made a lot of improvements in our uh, in our ability to uh, to handle joins. Um, I think that um, we're still, uh, you know, I would say if we're still not uh, not great at dealing with joins that handle very uh, very large amounts of data. But if your uh, if the indexes in your uh, in your uh, tables are such that you know the join can be satisfied without. Uh, but without having to do a big a big cross join that uh, multiplies out a lot of data, then you know it's it, it I think it works uh, works pretty well. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, can, can we take advantage of uh, of operator supplied information to to uh, help optimize data placements? Uh, like to put some some parts of the data on uh, on fast storage and some on on slower storage. Uh, yes. So um, that that's currently uh, currently fairly uh, fairly coarse grained. Um, that it's uh, you, you can you can configure these things at the table level. And so you can have uh, have a table that's uh, that, that's stored on uh, on SSD and another that's stored on spinning disk. Um, in 1.2, with the uh, row level uh, partitioning enterprise feature that I talked about, um, we want to be able to let, let you specify that on a uh, on a uh, on a sub table uh, granularity, which could include uh, do doing things like uh, designating a, a timestamp column as your uh, as your uh, region as your region key, and then say um, Say that uh, you know you, uh, you'd have a, have like a cron job shifting shifting boundary so that data would uh, age out into uh, into cheaper uh, cheaper storage over time. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>